So we'll start the today's practical. In a, uh, good morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about the, how we are actually analyzing the sequence to know about the phylogeny, to know about what are the features they have, <coughs> and the, how we'll do the annotation of the sequence and other things. So last uh, few days we are now are, I think familiar with what are the different. Uh, machine generated formats of the sequence, the, the API file, that is, you know, that is when the machine gives you a sequence, that is a chromatogram file, that is called dot API file. Now, if you see that dot API file, in the initial uh, few reads and the uh, last few reads, they are not formatted files. So, what do you mean by actually this uh, ASC2 text file? and what we are doing for word and other things, they are also file. So what is the difference? So text file, in the text file, each byte represents one character. Okay? You know, computer programs, they recognize bytes. Okay? So one byte means one character. So if you type A, that means it is one byte. Okay? So for example, notepad file. But the computer recognizes majority all the program, whatever we are using, we are mainly binary files. Why is so in case of binary files, th this relation doesn't hold true. That means one character, one byte, this doesn't hold true for binary file. Binary file is, it may be two, three characters may be uh, constituting of one byte. Okay. So one byte is one character is only for this text file, but for this binary file, many character may represent one byte. Okay? So, the word file, whatever is there, they are actually the binary files. But all the sequence, as I told you, that they are string file, they are continuous one one character means one one byte. So, we should not process any sequence file using the word processor. Okay? Always we have to use notepad to create any file format. If you, you try to create your sequence file using the binary uh, file or what processor, then those formats will not be recognized by the software which you will be using. Okay? So, always remember create the file using notepad and using this SCI text format. How I will show you? So, what cannot be used to create the sequence file format. So, these are the different file formats which uh, uh, different softwares use. Uh, some of the very common like GenBank format or FASTA format, Filef format. So, these are different file formats and uh, most commonly what we use for single sequence, these are the different formats. For multiple sequence means you are, uh, you are trying to do a multiple alignment, you can use this uh, different formats and in, uh, either single or multiple file, the most common one is FASTA format. So, I will try to tell you few of these formats, how they looks like actually. So, the FASTA format is the most common format, almost recognized by all the uh, software. So, FASTA format, the full form is first all format, first all or some people call them first alignment format or first all format. So, this first format, it is a, the, there are two part. The first part is first line is description line. It is a single line, contains a greater than symbol in the first column followed by the lines of the sequence data. So, this is, this, this, that should be a greater than sign. Then you have to write the name mm -hmm. of the things mm -hmm. or accession number or whatever of your sequence and then you have to paste the sequence in the next paragraph. Okay? And you have to save this file as text file in the notepad. Then this file will call as FASTA format. Even you can save it dot .fas format. Okay? So, this is the very common FASTA format. We have given you a sequence in the this FASTA format which you will analyze. Then second important file format is file, if, file, uh, file format. So phylogenetically, 
in what is that in input uh, file format. So, there are two types of format one is interleaved and sequential format and the, the different software also uh, can recognize this file format. So, this is the interleaved format in this format what happens all the sequences they are written 10 10 10 uh, base pair and then in first uh, pa um, sequence all the sequence names are given not in other. So, if it is starting from 1 and it is going up to 60 then 61. So, again you do not have to write the names and at the top you have to write how many of the sequences are there and what is the nucleotide size of the sequence and then you have to create this file if format. So, first line is the number of the sequence number of the sites and second is the sequence IDs and then the sequences. So, this is the file if format. So, you can convert all this first format to file if format, file if format to first format any format you can convert. Uh, there is another sequential format where one name of the sequence something is there and then entire sequence you can put second sequence entire sequence you can put. So, this is called sequential format file for file if format. So, you can create your file like that also. Uh, this is the nexus format it is a little bit complicated format because you have to type it in the uh, DOS and then create this kind of format. But today there is no need because there, there are different softwares are available if you have a uh, faster format the software can convert those into different file formats. Another important file format is GenBank file format which we call them as flat file. So, after your sequence Yes, hmm. uh, we were talking about this flat file only on Saturday evening. Uh, had you really done it on uh, Sunday, which we wanted you to do that, uh, it looks like something like this, right? How, how many of you did it, by the way? <laughs> yeah, some Today hands are raising, Today correct? Himanshu has done it. Okay, good. So at least one member in each group would have done it. Huh? Okay, fine. Uh, it looks something like this. Okay, this is all about the passport data about your sequence. Okay. You just read it from the beginning. So the uh, first thing is that there will be a locus. That this number was is given by the NCBI people that every sequence, whatever you will do, they will provide a number against that sequence that is called the accession number or the locus number. Then there will be how much nucleotide length when is the what is the molecule it is a linear circular molecule the date of release and the title the he heading what is this sequence about and their different um, I mean source and their journal and authors and then these are called features that means what are there in this sequence. So, here you can give different genes that what are there in this sequence and those genes can be written as two different things one is gene that is this nucleotide to this nucleotide and the name of the gene and the CDS. CDS means actually the complementary DNA sequence because many times the sequence may have some intron sequence. So, what is the actual the CDNA sequence that you have to give as CDS and then uh, uh, there will be like uh, that protein sequence also it will come and the protein ID. So, this will be created by the uh, software itself. So, when you uh, deposit a sequence into the gen bank you have to give this information and then they will create after you uh, because there are uh, different columns different points. So, you have to for example, uh, it will ask you what is the source. So, you have to tell that from which organism you are isolating which country. So, you have to give those kind of sequence identifier and these are the different annotation of the genes and other features and then when you give all those information the software will now generate this kind of file format which is called flat file and this flat file is actually deposited into the database. So, you cannot cannot download this file this uh, this flat file it is a page of the entire database ok only you have to retrieve this sequence. Is it clear to all of you? So, did you notice the protein uh, which is given after the sequence? So, this is the gene this is the CDS and uh, the name and other things and then the this is the translated product. 
the amino who, acid sequence. Who, who translated it? You only translated it. You see? Expasi translate tool. Any other tool is available? It's only Expasi or some more are there? Blast X? Anything else? Augustus? Anything else? So you have to, if you are not using those things, try to use Evgens. different things. There are many more. Many more uh, such okay. kind of things are the there. The list goes and goes and goes. Expasi translate tool is the most popular one. But don't think that that is the only uh, place where you can translate your uh, sequences. Okay, there are number of options are there. Okay, yeah. please proceed. So these are the this is the GenBank flat file, and uh, these are some uh, again software online software by which you can convert any file format to any file format. So this is called Red CQ sequence conversion. So here you give your sequence in one format and you ask the software it will convert that uh, file format to another file format. Okay. There are another uh, is this Windows based program that is the online and this is the window based program. Uh, this uh, Gene Studio or uh, Sequence Water. So, they he this software can read this different file formats and write also that means convert it into this kind of fo file formats and tutorials are uh, available in YouTube also you can see that how you can convert all those things. Okay. So, uh, it is not that a uh, very difficult task nowadays to convert uh, into different uh, format because different softwares used in different file formats. And today only we can show you only one or two uh, software that does not mean that these two softwares are only available for the sequence analysis, thousands of softwares are available. Okay. So, uh, now uh, what we will do actually? We have already given you a sequence in the first format. You must have downloaded the sequence from the because now I will use the term download because now we have retrieved the sequence, make a first a file, and that file we have given you, not the database entirely. Okay, now you can download that sequence from your mail. Okay, and then annotate the feature of this sequence. What are the ORFs are there, and how you'll visualize those ORFs in that sequence? And when everything is ready, then you can submit the sequence. And I think submission exactly has been yeah. done. So uh, before submission, you have to annotate your sequence with different genes, different ORFs, and then you have to submit the sequence. And after submission, then you have to do analysis of this sequence through BLAST, <laughs> and then retrieve the sequence which are showing similarity from the BLAST. Then make multiple sequence file, and then analyze with two different softwares, BioEdit and Mega. Yeah. So this is what we have been uh, uh, teaching you this morning. Also, I told mm. it is put properly in this uh, slide now. Mm. So the fact that you reach the flat file stage, that means you are ready for molecular phylogenetic analysis. Okay. So the 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 uh, the indication you you reached this stage is creating the flat file. Mm. Okay. Now what you have to do is you have to. Uh, blast it and retrieve the sequences uh, nicely put it retrieve the sequences showing similarity okay now you make a multiple sequence file then proceed with by edit mega and so many other programs are also there i think let us go one by one now. Hmm. so uh, i think you everybody has that sequence so we'll start with that So this is the file I have given you. It is written as a greater than sign test, and then the sequence. Okay. So this sequence we will try to analyze today. Okay. So as I have told you, first we have to uh, annotate this sequence with different features. What are the genes and other things are there in this? Otherwise, what to download? What to uh, submit into the gene bank? So first we have to know what are the 
ORFs, this particular sequence is there or whether there is no ORFs in this sequence. So, for that you copy this sequence and open your browser. and in the google it ncbi the internet is not there Connect your uh, computer to say lab, uh, Wi-Fi or hotspot. Definitely, you get the key connection. Or you can Google it in uh, directly ORF Finder. It will open directly ORF Finder. O R F. Open reading frame. Okay. So, what, is, what do you mean by ORF and gene? Why we are not asking that gene finder? Why we are asking ORF finder? What is the difference between ORF and gene? These are very basic question, undergraduate question. Anything, anyone? Only. Gene has uh, other uh, components of gene that promoter and uh, regulator yes. uh, as well as the exon, intron, intron, but the ORF only contains the coding region. Coding region. So, ORFs only consist of the coding sequences. It starts from a start codon that is ATG in the DNA and AUG in the RNA. and it has a stop codon, but in a gene it has a promoter element, a terminator element and within the gene they have some intronic and exonic sequence. Okay. So, that entire thing is made up of gene, but the functional thing is only ORF which actually translate to give you the protein. Okay. So, for identification of the promoter terminator there are different other softwares are there. But for to identify wh which is the exact translatable, translatable region in the sequence, you need to find out the ORFs, not the gene. Then it cannot because it has different genes may have different kind of promoters. So, it cannot directly tell you the what is the gene as, as, as such. So, if you find out a ORF, then preceding to that ORF sequence, you can find out a promoter and after that thing you can find out a terminator and other things. Okay. So, first thing that you have to find out in your sequence whether any functional translatable uh, um, sequence is there which can be translated into a protein. So, this is in the NCBI one service is given there are many other things also it is not that only one, but due to time restriction only we will show only one thing and that ORF finder. So, in the ORF finder you have copied your sequence I think. Everybody is having the sequence downloaded, correct? Okay. Keep it ready so now in the fast. Keep it format. ready and always it you open that sequence always because many times you have to copy it and do analysis. So, this is the ORF finder uh, which is a service provided by NCBI. Here there is a 
option enter query sequence. Query sequence means your sequence what you have uh, done that is called query sequence and the sequence which is available uh, that is the uh, sequence which is there in the database. So, you enter your sequence here. Query sequence is the one which you got after quantic assembly if it is a long read. Uh, otherwise, a forward or reverse if it is a short read. Yeah, exactly. Control E. Uh -huh, you keep the cursor and control E. Uh, yes, and control C. Yes. So, everybody? Control A, control C, control V. Okay. So, you have <laughs> now only three commands. Control A. Now you, you can control see. Control C, <laughs> control V. So, every control with every key has some function. Yeah. The, the, this thing you should know. Control S means save, control Z means undo, control Y means redo. Okay, if you use <laughs> mouse every time, <laughs> na, sometimes mouse get spoiled. Do not do that. <laughs> so, all the keys with control and with C has different, different functions. So, uh, after, after uh, pasting the sequence here, then you can see that minimum ORF length. So, by default it is 75 nucleotide. So, if a 75 nucleotide sequence is there, the software will think that this could be a uh, potential ORF, but many times we may not have only that much small gene, very few times we may have this kind. So, you can increase that size, that cutoff limit you can increase. So, for example, I am increasing it to uh, 300, it is a very standard one, 300 nucleotide means at least 100 amino acid sequence will be your protein product. This okay. is clear to you? That is what he is telling, minimum is 75. Minimum, so if you find out uh, with 300, if you find out that I am not getting any sequence, any, any ORFs then you can reduce them. If you first you do it with 75, what will happen? Several small, 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 small ORFs it will give. Okay, that is why I'm, I first I told you the computer whatever things you will give, it will give you some result. Now, it may create confusion within you. So, you have to minimum uh, this idea should be you have, uh, you should have that our gene sequence mu must have the amino acid sequence how much length. If it is a very small, then you can do and it, if it is generally 100 amino acids should be there in the protein, then it can form a functional 3D structure and other things. Otherwise, if it is too small, then we cannot form a 3D structure completely, properly. Okay. So, your curry sequence length you should be knowing after making the contact. Uh, closer to that, uh, the numbers hmm. you can give it here. Okay. That should be the what number to put. You hmm. should not get confusion. Okay. So, you know the curry sequence length. So, the query sequence length divided by 3 hmm. to get your protein. Hmm. Okay. So, so that uh, arbitration if you do, then you will get to know what uh, size number you can give there. Hmm. Here I have given a sequence, whatever sequence I have given, it is a whole genome sequence of one virus. Okay. So, we are expecting many gene sequence will be there. If it is only one gene sequence, then you try to give that much sequence as a, as a uh, I mean uh, query sequence that this could be the maximum length. So, I want to know whether it is having a protein or not, but if it is a full genome, then you have to give a, as much as big sequence, then only you can have some uh, more interesting results. Okay. So, uh, you can give it 100 and then genetic code generally we use standard, but if you want to, if you are uh, doing something uh, for example, some mitochondrial DNA of some bacteria or something. So, you have to use the particular uh, codon which is specially used by that particular organism. Okay. But normally, we used to give standard besides that there are several other types of organism and other things are there. You can give as per your choice that which sequence you are handling, but normally we use the standard. Okay. So if you are in confusion, you select standard. Uh, if you are confusion that what thing I will give, you is that clear? Use standard. Okay, standard Isn't means it? 
the start codon A T G and there are three stop codon ochre, opa, opal, amber, those three stop codon and one start codon. So, there will be no confusion. Yes. I got that thing. Hmm. So, but why there are only 31 uh, apart from the standard where there are many organisms and we are having only 31. Uh, no, if if they ha they use the codon differently, then only there will be other other organism use the same standard codon. Okay, hmm. but if some organism, some particular uh, means uh, sequence, they use different codons then only you have to choose otherwise it is standard okay yes. if it is eukaryotic if it is normal prokaryotic they they have but specifically particularly any organism which is using different codons then you have to choose that particular organism okay and uh, is that clear to all of you If it is not clear, you ask me Your because I will proceed and then go coming back is very yeah. difficult. You are getting everything, yeah? yes, great. Yeah. To everyone? Because you know mitochondria, chloroplast, if you uh, want to uh, uh, means characterize your pathogen using those particular uh, sequences, then uh, the their codon biasness is different, their codon utilization is different. Okay? So, for that you have to choose that particular organism specific or organelle specific codons which they are using. Okay? Otherwise, you use standard. Sometimes, you know that among those organisms they are not there, but you particularly know that my organism or my molecule has a start codon not ATG, different things. Okay? So, in that case you specifically give that ORF start codon use this sequence. So, it is if it is ATG, ATG and alternate things and any uh, other sense things codon. sense codon like that. Okay? Because in, in our plant viruses we often come across with this kind of things that where the genome actually transcribed first as a big RNA molecule then a polyprotein they produce. Okay? So, there is no particular start codon for any genes. But if you know that this for this gene, they this particular nucleotide they use as a uh, start codon, then you give that particular start codon in your uh, sequence, then they will choose that in the genome where is that particular start codon is there. Okay? Is that clear? Especially for some virology students who are sitting here. Is that clear? Hmm. M many times we have this uh, ATG is not the start codon, okay. but for general eukaryotic and viral bacterial, but in bacterial also if you analyze it with the mitochondrial things then it will it be will different. Be different yeah. okay. uh, so, so, depending upon your organelles and your choice of uh, your sequence you have to give these things and then you have to click the submit. So, when you click the submit it will generate the ORF file. So, it is calculating ORF found 7. So, this uh, they found 7 ORFs okay. and this is the this is the result. For example, ORF 1 this is present in the plus strand because you know any gene sequence can be trans translated into two sense. One is the sense which the sequence which you have given another one is from its complementary sense antisense antisense okay but in in our virology as it is a virus sequence often we come across with the, the thing that Both not only from the sense strand the protein is produced from the antisense strand also protein produced that is why the viruses utilize their genome very effectively because from the both the strand they generates the protein sequence proteins okay so for example this uh, this is the positive sense they produce a protein this is also a positive sense, they also produce a protein. So, this is the start codon, this is the stop codon, this is the nucleotide length and this is the protein amino acid sequence length. But you can see that both are them produced from the positive sense, but the, the frame is 1 and 2. So, any gene sequence can be translated into 6 different open reading frames, 2 from the 2 strands and from each strand there will be codon will be of 3, 3 nucleotide each. So, the first nucleotide if you consider then first, second, third nucleotide if you take 
they will form a frame second third fourth nucleotide if it will form uh, you consider then that will also form a frame and again third fourth fifth nucleotide it will form again after that again it will come down to the first frame second frame third frame so from every strand there will be three frame they will translate it into three frame so from the positive sense also three frame from the negative sense also three frame so you from one particular sequence there is a possibility to generate six different orfs this Clear? is what we have witnessed in the uh, expasi the translate tool the six possible uh, translation frames frames but okay. only one will be giving you now the we are full that full thing yeah. okay one will give you the full amino acid sequence in other you may have encountered with different stop codon in between that means those are not the functional orifs okay so it will give it, it is giving you in the negative sense these are the different uh, orifs and the two are in the positive sense so Ha. So, that uh, expressi we can uh, show them it and uh, uh, it was shown actually ha. it was shown expressi actually. So, uh, so you can you just uh, snapshot is uh, this uh, result or copy it and paste it because this I will uh, again need or uh, you can keep it here and uh, the next software when we will use that how to visualize this ORFs because some are in positive sense, some are in negative sense. So, in the entire genome how these ORFs are actually located, how we will visualize that ORFs okay? that will uh, show you using that software called uh, snap gene viewer. You take a screen, uh, screenshot and keep it somewhere. Which one? This is the start codon and the stop codon means the entire sequence you have seen. So, from the 2612 nucleotide, it the software it found a, 180 g. It is a base call, base position. Okay, base position, nucleotide coordinate, and the <coughs> sto stop codon is 1527. So, this is a length in this region, one warp could be possible. Everything is predictive, it is not the final. The bioinformatics only can predict. So, now if this is a warp, you can express that thing. If, if you are able to see a real protein, then you can finalize yes this the predicted warp or putative warp now a functional warp functional protein so hmm. all of you understood this the numbers what is uh, uh, reflecting this uh, small table all of you understand yeah. you must tell them uh, just tell them like she asked no what is that 2612 is higher in uh, number that which is the start codon and the stop is 1527 so, and yeah, so that please, all hmm. right. As they are antisense, so, so it is written in the, this direction. Yeah, that and point is understood? And how, how this ORF 4 will come first, ORF 2 and ORF 1 is coming last, how? Because this is means, uh, shorted as per the length of the molecule, means protein. So, the first one is ha having the highest length 1086 nucleotide and last one is having 318 nucleotide only, okay. What is in the last column? Amino acid and the nucleotide. That is the difference between 2612 and 1527. Okay. And the figure divided by 3 is number of amino acids. Yeah. Okay. So, you have uh, copied it or uh, save a screenshot or something like that because the same ORF position we need now to generate a visualized fo uh, file for how Take it looks like okay? <laughs> and that will and be useful for any generation somewhere. of any plasmid map or anything uh, uh, to know that how it looks like. Okay? So, now this is your ORFs okay? and now you have to give annotation that these ORFs I got in my sequence these are the ORFs. So, when you deposit the sequence in the gen bank, you have to give some name of this ORFs. For that, you have to do a comparative genomics, a comparative analysis with the other sequence which is already deposited in the database to find out whether in the similar region anybody has reported in any sequence any ORF. Okay? So, that will, uh, but you copy it, then we will analyze those things. 
Okay. So, first we would like to visualize how it looks like and then we will go for the comparative analysis. So, now open the uh, Snapgene viewer, I think Snapgene viewer is here. So, download snap gene viewer also I think I might have done it already keep it ready. This windows version you have to download there are uh, other versions also. So, the plasmid which you are drawing by hand you can very easily draw any plasmid map any sequence based map any uh, uh, restriction map everything using this software. So, it will generate like that automatically <laughs> it will tell you that what are the different RFs and other things. So, you will able to know it is too much slow. No, no I have already. Okay, then you would have to open that. Uh, Now, just open that snap gene viewer. What is happening? Yes, please, Kimonshu. <laughs> Download it, Snap Gene Viewer. Downloaded and installed? She has got a question. Yes. Stand up and ask, please. Mm. Sir, how many ORFs are possible uh, in a given case? In a given case, means it this depend upon your sequence. See, they can be many. They can be many. They can be many. For example, here I have given you a sequence which is around 2700 nucleotide, and you have observed that there is a possibility of having seven ORFs. We can give you other, you may find that there is no ORFs. Sir, in the first step uh, mm. where we put that the number of maximum where we put 300. Mm. Sir, suppose that we had uh, only 75, we did not know about that. Mm. Oh, uh, we had 300 and we put 75, so they will give more ORFs. More ORFs. Oh. They will give more ORFs and that time you have many confusion that this much small small ORF, it may be a 50 nucleotide or 75 nucleotide and it will give you a 20 amino acid sequence or 25 amino acid sequence. That may not be a functional protein. Okay. Hmm. Which is which may not be a functional thing. So try to give a bigger things, and then you come down. If it is not available, then come down and try to see. Come down and then try to see. Not that it is uh, from the smallest to biggest. You first give big, yeah. then you if it is you are not getting any things, then you come down. And then you come down like that. And again, I am telling it is not only one software for a, for any bioinformatics analysis. Uh, try to use more than one software of similar kind to have a consensus. Okay, yeah. this software is giving you seven. There may be another software of RF finder or other other gene detection software. They may give you five and try to find out which are the commons because all the softwares use some hidden markup model okay, to generate the predictive feature of the sequence. Okay. Because what actually does? The software, this RF prediction, they gave some features okay, that this could be a gene sequence. Okay. So, these softwares, they find out those features in the sequence. So, when they find out those features coming together, then they uh, establish this that this could be a functional ORF. Okay. So, now this uh, whatever files you have given already to the software, software only knows those things. Okay. 
for example, so in, in the software you have given ATG if you find then it is a start codon, if you find the UAG or uh, TAA this is a uh, stop codon and these are the different Tata box and these are the different features of a normal ORF sequence. So, they will scan the sequence and if they find those kind of sequence they predict that this could be a ORF. Another software may use some other more or less uh, um, queries and they according to that they have a kind of base file already uh, incorporated into the software. Software will match with the, that base file and if they find that match then only they will give you the signal. So, so actually this is a plasmid map. So, we try to create this kind of map of our sequence, it may be circular, it may be a linear, uh, what are the different restriction sites, what are the warifs, how they looks like. So, we can we can prepare from our sequence. So, you go to the file, new DNA file click new DNA file. So, try to write also and do otherwise all the softwares after going back to the home you will not able to remember what I have told you. Okay. So, Somewhere at least write it, one no? person write another person make make a group do in both group, but uh, you please two, 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 two person then you one person should write and one person should uh, do the implement. Okay. Otherwise, you will not able to understand where I am clicking. So, go to file, then new DNA file. So, one pop up window will come. Here, you have to paste your sequence, whatever we have given you. We cancel it, we cancel it. Okay. Again. Again. Control C. Control. Control A. So, already Control you C. have copied it. Control already B. you have copied it. Just paste it. Okay. Now, I know this virus is a circular virus, genome is circular. So, I am giving uh, this topology of this uh, molecule is not linear, it is circular. Okay. As this genome is a circular genome, so you can give circular if it is your, your genome or your uh, sequence is a linear, most probably linear ma in majority cases. So, in that case you can give linear and then uh, everybody has done then click click ok so uh, detect common features and then click ok so this is your test sequence the restriction unique restriction site they are showing you that in this sequence these are the different unique restriction site that means present only once in this entire genome there, there may be many others so that you can find out from the uh, enzyme list so you can see in the down there will be map sequence, this is the sequence, this is the map, this is the enzyme sites. So, these are the other enzyme sites which are present. So, here we are only uh, by default they will take only one single nucleotide cutter, single uh, enzyme cutter. You can have many others which is double cutter and other things you can choose from here and you can uh, uh, it can show you that whether uh, double cutter and other things are there. So, here are features till now we have not included any features the features means whether any genes and other things are there. Okay. And then uh, primers, primers yeah. in your entire genome where the primers are actually located and what it should amplify you should visualize that thing that how where the primers are located and how it amplify which region of your genome. Okay. So, all those things you can see visualize. Okay, so, again go to the map and then go to edit, go to edit select range, select range. Okay. Are you following? Following. Great. Try to follow quickly, otherwise it will take long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, now you can see in your that ORF file, what are the regions it
So here already it is given for example ORF1 <coughs> it starts from 142 to 498. So give 142. But Rubin following? Good. Ramesh? Great. 142 to 498. Okay. Select the region. So it has selected this is the region I am talking about. Okay. And then go to the feature. So go to feature, then add feature. Add feature. Here you can write the name of this ORF if you know, otherwise you can you have to analyze and then know. Now we are writing only ORF1. Okay. ORF1 and this is a positive sense. So, we have to give the arrow in this direction. If it is a negative sense, we have to garrow, uh, give the arrow in the opposite direction. You got it so now? 5 prime 2? 5 prime 3, to three prime. prime. If it is opposite sense, the negative sense prime protein, then you have to five give prime. the 5 prime to 3 prime. So, in that opposite direction. So, this is the arrow you have to give and then give OK. okay. So, it is asking that it is it is having a translated things. It the software also detected. Say yes. Do you want to want to show the protein sequence also? If you want to show, you can show. Otherwise, you, you cancel it. So you can translate it. So you can it it will give you the what is the translated product in the in the sequence file. So it has given you. You can see in the sequence file. So this is the region we have choose, uh, selected, and these are the amino acid sequence for this ORF. Okay. Agap, you are following. Everybody this is, is following? a backup of our okay. notation what we practiced on Saturday. Okay. Right. So this is the ORF one, which is present from this region to this region. Now for the beautification purpose, this ORF you can place it here itself. So this is the thing. So it will directly tell you. It is inside the thing that how the ORFs are there. Okay. So this is one ORF. In that way. You can choose different ORFs. So you can I am not the full circle. Full also. circle. Okay. You can practice it in your home that in the all the different ORFs how they are present in the entire genome. I have shown only one. So you will see both orientation arrow mark. Na? It will be in uh, sense orientation. It will be in an anti sense antisense. orientation. So uh, okay. one we, we can show only one uh, anti sense. Then one will, uh, uh, one anti sense. Uh, so one anti sense this uh, this one two six one two one five two seven. Yeah. That's pretty larger one. Let us see how, how much one length two it takes up. One five two seven. So edit add feature range first two six one two two one five two seven. Yeah. One five two seven. Yeah. Yes. 1527. Select. Okay. So select this region. But now it is showing this. Yeah. Okay. Because because we are we have not given this direction. So now select feature, orientation. Hmm. Add feature. feature. This direction. Or of two we can put. Ah. Now feature two is or of two we will put. Okay. Correct only. Yeah, correct only. It has come the correct orientation. See the arrow mm. mark. Okay. Okay, it's so a almost half of the whole sequence <coughs> is this particular ORF. So in that way, one ORF is in this direction, one is in direct this direction. So in that way, you can uh, you can find out the different ORFs. Clear? Now okay. just. We were lagging behind. No, I am not seeing that uh, map. It looks like everyone uh, got it. Eh? That is very nice. 
So similarly, if you want to uh, show the primer, you can sh search and uh, fix the primer also. This, this, in this, you can. There is a primer option also. So you can show, you can give the primer, and you can view the primer sequence also. That from where, which region to which region, the primers are located. Okay. So it is okay. Now uh, we'll move to. Uh, so clear. So how you are going to visualize the ORFs and other things? So the now point is, you can add as many features as possible. Hmm. Okay. Okay. This Snap Gene Viewer will help you to add as many features as possible. So now we are moving to the next part. That is the how to do the pairwise alignment and how to retrieve the sequence blast and multiple alignment. So in the NCBI, again open the NCBI page, <coughs> open the NCBI and go to, okay. so that, that you now practice because yes. now time we, we cannot devote to whole day time in one okay. software. This is, this is a kind of a demonstration of handling your sequence, visualizing the sequence. So the, just imagine the sequence what we handle, the FASTA file, it doesn't mean anything to us. It is something like a kind of, you know, a maze of uh, uh, four letters. Uh, when you put it in the proper program, proper software, and it gives a beautiful circular map. And not only that, after adding the features, now it is even more self-explanatory. Okay. okay. So, so this visualization, uh, uh, visualization tools are so important in biology, especially the uh, bioinformatics. The molecular phylogeny practically is all about how to give a kind of a shape to the reads, whatever you got it from your organisms. You understand? So okay. we will move ahead. Hmm. And uh, so now we will uh, start with the actual uh, the phylogenetic analysis, retrieving the sequence. So open the NCBI homepage and uh, break okay. for tea. So before we move okay. into the actual molecular phylogeny practical. Let us have a break now. Have tea and come back by 11:30 uh, here. <laughs> quickly, okay. as quickly as possible, because this practical we scheduled up to 12:15. <laughs> so we expect that before 12:15, you understand how to make a phylogenetic tree <laughs> using the sequences. Very what quickly, is given we to have you. to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Quickly, we have to show you. Okay. So all of you must practice this. Without practice, practice because. Software only one, we can show you few features, not the each and every button. Yeah. That you have to now, if you are, have interest, then you can click it in, in your home and to see that what is there in that. Okay. Try for the different options and hmm. the beautification yeah. of your. Uh. <laughs> uh, that beautification they can do. So let's quickly break for tea and come back fast. So welcome back. We will uh, start the second uh, session this morning. That is all about multiple alignment and uh, visualizing the multiple uh, alignment files using different programs. Remember, CLC uh, Genomics Workbench has got a built-in option uh, to create a tree from uh, multiple uh, alignment files. And we have a number of uh, other programs also. They are freely available online. And one such program, uh, last week we highlighted, that is Mega. Mega has got different versions. The latest version is Mega 10. And even if you have the prayer version uh, in your system, it doesn't matter. All of them are basically the same kind of uh, uh, software. It, it is going to support the different file formats. Uh, it is a visualization tool. Uh, you can do uh, molecular phylogenetic analysis. Okay? Yeah, start. So in the NCBI, the home page, if you see, there is an option called BLAST, Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. So click on that.
So, that day I told you that in the blast you can do different analysis. This is the nucleotide blast, it will um, analyze your sequence against the nucleotide database. Blast X, the translated nucleotide to protein, and T blast N is protein to the uh, nucleotide and protein blast. So, these are the two main nucleotide blast and protein blast and these two are the conversion between the nucleotide to protein and protein to nucleotide clear. So, as we have only the nucleotide and we would like to know only the nucleotide blast today. So, click on this nucleotide blast. So, this will open up this, this page here it is the in uh, location where you can enter your sequence again just enter your sequence which we have given you because we now want to know. Now, we know that what are the features in this sequence, what are the war f's and other things we know, but we do not know whether this sequence is having any similarity with any other sequence and if the similarity is high whether it is having any homology with any other sequence or not. So, when you paste it here and then go to this databases, you can search your sequence against different databases. Okay. I told you that NCBI is the general sequence database. This has all the sequence whatever whoever is deposited this, this gen bank is having those sequences. Besides that they also have specialized sequence databases also. For example, you want to uh, uh, search your sequence against human genome sequence against rice genome sequence against any particular genome sequence that also you can do using a particular you, you, you take the data set or database to compare as your choice. Okay. So, th these are the option that human genome, mouse genome or different other different things are there. You can choose that with which particular data set you can uh, use or you can analyze your data, but if you are not sure that whether your your particular uh, means organism or the pathogen is having any database or not, then you can do others, others and there is non redundant sequence, because in the sequence there you may have redundancy in the sequence, because of what kind of homology, homologs, why the sequence redundancy occur in one genome. The first day I told you due to redundancy, due to orthologs or paralogs, paralogs. So, due to that thing, so many genes may be duplicated, triplicated, many some such sequences are there which is present many times. So, the gene duplication events. Okay, so, if you search your sequence against the entire database where the redundancy is also there, so your sequence may hit in uh, with the similar Same. type of sequence in one organism. So, to avoid that you can you, you have to choose these others and inners etcetera, inner means non redundant sequence. So, only one type of sequence it will take, it may have different copies in the same organism, but it will only choose only one copy and analyze your sequence. This is clear to all of you. What uh, what is being explained now is you have to blast it with uh, this non redundant database. If you are not sure about origin of your sequence, if you know <coughs> very sure about the origin of your uh, sequence, if it is a bacteria or fungi and just drop down menu it is clearly there, you select that one. Uh, perhaps that might speed up the analysis okay, rather than searching the entire gamut of uh, sequences, it will selectively search only selected databases. Okay, it is also very, very important. So, after that you this is the uh, program selection you optimize for three different types. One is called highly similar sequence or mega blast. So, if your sequence you are thinking that it has definitely people have already done and many sequence will be available and uh, my sequence will have much similarity to it many sequence, then you can choose this option highly similar sequence. Second option is more dissimilar sequence which is called discontinuous mega blast and somewhat similar sequence which is blast n. So, there are three types one is highly similar sequence, one is somewhat similar sequence and one is more dissimilar sequence. So, different types of things 
if you predict that this kind of things is happening. So, you choose according to the that the program which uh, the algorithm actually uh, based on which the blast will do the searching. So, when you will do this search then uh, you have uh, you have chosen for example, here highly we have similar sequences, highly similar sequence mega blast which is most commonly mm -hmm. option then you do the blast analysis and then it will generate. So, what it is doing the software is doing your sequence it is searching with the entire sequence whichever is present it may be human it may be uh, any organism and it is searching with each sequence. So, quick it will search individually pair wise one sequence with your sequence another sequence with your sequence that is called pair wise sequence. local alignment search. So, pair wise your sequence will be searched will be analyzed by the software within so quick time and they generates this kind of color key. Color key means if it is red color means more than 200 is the, is the score. I told you that blast will generate some score value more score means more similarity. Okay. So, it generates very high score value with different sequences and you can either click here. So, it will tell you with which sequence it is showing and what is the score value and E value. I told you there are two things the blast will tell you one is score value and one is E value. E value indicates the, the probability of not matching your sequence with the query sequence and uh, uh, the, uh, the score value. So, in that way different molecule if you click. So, it will show you the score and E value. So, one point to remember each red bar represent one entry. One entry that means okay. your sequence it is matching with one particular sequence because it is a pair wise alignment. So, how it actually looks like. So, this is a just pictorial representation the actual things is given here. So, you can see the sequence producing significant alignments. Yes. That red color lines they are hmm. different different lengths. So, they are showing that how much similarity yes that means okay. if you see from first nucleotide to total nucleotide. So, query coverage is full, but if you see here the query coverage in this region is less the query coverage in this region is less because blast is a local alignment search tool. So, only the region which is showing considerable amount of similarity it will only search that region. Okay, it will not search the entire if it is not there. So, uh, if you see so these are the different sequences with which individual sequences with which your particular query sequence gave very high scores and this query coverage is, is given for example, here 90 199 percent if you go down the query value is you just see 78 percent query coverage. That means, it is not match taking the entire sequence the region which is showing maximum similarity. So, if that kind of sequence it you will take, but you can see that it may it may be 78 percent, but it is also showing 92 percent similarity. So, this similarity is having no value because it is showing only from that 78 percent region what is the percent similarity. The fraction of the length. Okay. You can see that here it is 100 percent query coverage, but it is 87 percent. So, it is much more confident because 100 percent it is taking, but it is having only 87 percent. But here it is 77 percent query coverage, but 92 percent similarity is not co correct thing because the rest 23 percent they have not calculated. If you calculate it may be coming down further. Okay. So, from the blast we should not take the percent sequence identity value directly from here. Okay. Only we will able to know what are the sequences and how to retrieve those sequences. So, you can choose first 10 sequence for example, first 10 sequence for example, I am giving, but in your case you have to choose what is uh, your intention that wh which sequence you should take. So, that okay. point we already discussed it all depends upon your objective. Suppose, if you are going for intra specific uh, characterization of isolates, mm. then you have to hand pick the one which is matching with your you know expectations. Yes. Right. For example, if you want to uh, understand that what is the 
uh, phylogenetic relationship with your sequence and other strenal sequence which is present. Then you choose the only based on that strains of those you choose. Now, you want to see that your particular sequence how it is showing or how it is having the sim, uh, phylogenetic relationship with other sequence not within that particular species. It may be different interspecific. So, you, you should take only one sequence from that species other sequence from other species. Okay. So, that depends upon how what data set you want to do because your objective what is your objective. So, you can choose 10 sequence I have most probably have taken more. That is fine yeah. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 sequence you click okay. and here now unfortunately the gen bank also told download, but it is actually retrieve. Retrieve. earlier this button was written as retrieve. Now, they have also changed as download, but anyway so you, you, you click this uh, down arrow. Now, it is asking that with which format you have to download the sequence or retrieve the sequence. So, there are different options FASTA complete sequence, FASTA aligned sequence, gen bank compliant sequence. So, different types of uh, formats. So, we generally prefer FASTA complete sequence. Okay. So, FASTA complete sequence by default also it is giving and then continue. So, when you continue, so it will give you it is downloading now. So, whatever you clicked, so, so that many number of sequences will be downloaded. Yeah. So, it all it has created like that. It is a again a notepad file, string file, but this file you have to give, you have to choose or you have to convert it into a real FASTA format. So, you go to the file, save as, go all to the file. Practicing, following. Not down. It's quite fast. Everyone came to up to this stage. Yeah. Go to the file, save as. Okay. Go, go left to the click. File. You do. Control E. Left click. Go to the file and uh, here, for example, I am uh, saving it in the desktop. Uh, one folder I have created for uh, this analysis. So in this folder, I am saving. Here you can see save as type here you give all files here you give all files and here for example test test all file dot f a s you follow this it's very important so i am creating a fasta format file already it is written a greater than sign and all those things are there. Now, I am creating a dot FAS format file. So, as it is in the notepad, we can create ASC2 format file by in this process in the save as type format you have to give all files. Okay, give so whatever name you feel like then and then whatever name you want to give give, but after that give dot, dot FAS. FAS. Okay and save it okay go back to desktop and wherever the destination is new folder new folder new folder huh? new folder oh okay yeah hmm. Hmm. okay now now it has taken this uh, it may t uh, take this kind of uh, now this default, uh, default whatever program, is uh, program, last yeah. you have downloaded because it is Snapgen viewer, but we want to open it through uh, open with yeah. open with through mega. Okay. So, if you are not able to find out go to the program file and open through the just type MEGA yeah. mega 6 mega 6 you it have come matter, up to this have latest version does not matter it will work. Okay. It is okay. everybody come up to this. So, open it through mega say ok.
Yeah. Yes. 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 We cannot go back. That is the thing I am telling every time <laughs> that <laughs> you either follow or tell me stop. <laughs> control. Yes, save na. Control A. Save na. Now you open it in Mega. Go to the destination folder. Where did you? Wherever save? you have saved. Ah, yeah. uh, you left click, open it, fold. Open the folder. Open which? Open the folder first. Open the folder first. Then open the file with Mega. If it is not showing mega uh, m m is open, the open, yeah. uh, sign. If it is not showing ah. the mega, ah. you, you open mega. it with mega. Now we select mega. Follow immediately. Ask me because ah. it is very difficult. I can go back. <laughs> now she has opened it. Yeah, yeah file. Yeah, file. Ah. Oh, ah. Open session. <laughs> <laughs> it is just not like back button. <laughs> it's a one-way traffic. Huh? <laughs> Opened, opened the file and everybody's file is looking like this in the computer. Not able there to are open. Two windows. Practice once again. Yes. Have you opened? It's not opening. Apple problem. <laughs> Apple is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I asked Apple. this morning. <laughs> Apple may have problem <laughs> because all this software is. No. Everyone opened it. Good, good. Those two points there? You have, you have not saved it in dot fast format. Ah, it is dot txt. Uh, DXT format. Okay. So, you have to, <laughs> that is why I told. Yeah. Save as. Save as. Save give as name. Dot file 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 And all files in the save, save type side as everybody all open. file. Oh, and then dot fast. Otherwise, it will open as text Except file. Apple and <laughs> then you cannot do the analysis. <coughs> so, this software understands the dot fast file. If you are only opening the notepad text file, so it, it will show differently. It will not show like this. Hmm? No, no, that is Apple. Oh, they have Apple problem. <laughs> but uh, then you have to download the mega in the Apple version. In, uh, every no, it should software not be a problem have. actually. Uh, the correct download issue. Download issue actually. You have downloaded the mega in the Windows format. Okay. Okay, doesn't matter. You you can see the other person. How you can see the uh, from other computer. Not what happened? Why you have not? Did you save dot fas? Did you save it in dot fas? Control E, save as, give file name dot fas. Yes. Report. It has opened. It's open. Yeah. Opened. Okay. Yeah. I think except one person, every one of you could every open it in Mega. Okay. Everyone's computer is showing this two window or not? Yes. Uh, because if we will go, uh, we cannot <laughs> come back again. Okay. Uh, it's not only for Mega. Suppose if you are using CLC sequence viewer or CLC uh, genomics workbench, do the same thing. Hmm. Okay. Either you go to CLC and open this file or from this file itself, we can open in CLC either way. Because you have to mm, uh, convert the to file in that format yeah. which the software recognizes. Otherwise, it will not recognize, it will recognize that text file. Okay. The if you are not save type as all file, if you not give, then you cannot save it as a first file. Always it will save as dot txt. By default, it is dot txt. Okay. Even if you give dot, dot fs, it will not save as dot fs. That is why that is called ASC2 format where you have to type save type as all file. Yeah. Then only it will convert it as a ASC. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quickly. Okay. Now. Okay. So I am proceeding now. Go to this alignment. Now, what has happened here in Mega now? Ah. By just by opening that file, yes. what is the change you are noticing? Anybody? Alignment. Now, uh, this is started aligning. So, now it is not complete alignment. It is just putting them as per whatever that data you have given. Okay. Now, it, it will do and properly give the gaps and other things to uh, have a kind of alignment file. But here, you remember, 
this is one sequence and this entire string of sequence is the sequence of that particular file. So, that is why it is you have to write it in the string format or only ASC format, it is not a paragraph. Yeah. Okay. So, these are the things now you go to and if this is a protein sequence, you just have to give the DNA sequence automatically this translated protein sequence button if you click. So, it will gi it give you the translated protein sequence. So, you can analyze the protein phylogenetic analysis also, not only the DNA. So, now go to the alignment, go to alignment, okay. in the alignment you have different algorithms by which you can do alignment. Okay. So, most common is cluster W, so we can do by muscle and other things. So, we will do today by cluster W. So, click on the cluster W. So, align using the cluster W. The difference between those two algorithms? There are different algorithms because uh, the multiple alignment when you will do it will consider different gap penalties, extend gap penalties and based on that different algorithms people created, different matrix actually some, some algorithm uses substitution matrix, some algorithm uses blossom matrix. So, different statistical matrices are used to give a score value because everything is arbitrary that if two sequences are matching then if suppose A is replaced by a T, you give a score of 1. If A is A then it is 2. If a is uh, G, then you give another marks look like that. So, if it is different uh, matrix use different kind of values and different types of matrix and based on that different alignments they will perform. Okay. Clear? But you can try with all algorithms with all. also. Okay. For practice you can try all of them. Mm. Okay. Now so, so, when you click it is asking you have not selected anything to do alignment you have to select. So, either you select first or it will ask you select whether all. select all or you want to uh, specifically select few sequence. So, give all select for all. example. So, give ok. So, it will now selected all the sequences. Now, you just see this algorithm what are these? This gap penalty 15, gap extension penalty 6, this all this theoretical portion I have told first day and then uh, all this uh, multiple alignment also and DNA weight matrix, this is the matrix which it is using and all those things and after that you give this ok. So, we are giving generally default if we do not have any specific thing. To change these parameters. If you have a specific thing then only that. use those um, uh, uh, modify those otherwise by default you use and click ok. Now, you just see it is doing two things. PR wise alignment and multiple alignment. So, what it is doing for this first sequence, it is trying to do a global alignment with second sequence, first with third, first with fourth, like that. It will first do a PR wise alignment with each and individual sequence. So, with 1, 9 sequence, with 2, 9 sequence, with 3, 9 sequence, like that. Okay. And after doing that, they generate a score. When they generate this score, then they try to find out which score is maximum. That means, those two sequence are closer. Okay. Then, they took that two as a group and then they align all other analyze all other sequence again with that group. And in that way, they do a progressive alignment and which is called the multiple alignment. This is a progressive alignment. So, first they took two as a group and then th third one, then fourth one. Again, after that they create a th three component. Go for third one, go okay. for fourth one. Like that, so it is it is do it will be doing a progressive alignment. So, it is doing so pairwise alignment is finished. Now, it is started the multiple alignment, progressive alignment and it will it is going because it takes long time to it analyze. Is this point clear? In this first stop he explained remember how the in dendrogram how that those those three things are coming together. One that third one join, fourth one will join. So, when they mul do multiple alignment after that they create actually a guide tree yeah. that these two will come first along with that the third one will come along with that fourth one so will come like that stage. which one is coming. Forget about that you ok it has come. So, yeah, okay, it has done, okay. 
Now you can see, see this is the alignment file which was created by the software. You may see different, uh, different kind of you can see these are the gaps created okay, due to the alignment. Now one thing when you start doing alignment for the phylogenetic tree remember you should have all the sequence which you have retrieved they should have in the similar length. One sequence is 2700 another is 600 you should not do like that. So, try to trim your sequence as uniform sequence otherwise software can it may be 10, 15 base pair okay, but it should not be one is two, no, 2 kb sequence another one is 600 base pair sequence then there will be software will generate something okay, but you remember do not do those things the first one is you should remove all the vector sequence all the unnecessary sequence and trim your sequence as all the sequence should have the similar length otherwise these gaps will be more big big gaps and you will not have a proper sequence alignment and proper phylogenetic tree. Similar length also means the first base of all your entries should represent the same, same sequence, sequence coordinate. Yeah. Otherwise, you understand that is the most important point especially mm. if you are handling whole genome data mm. every base has given a specific coordinates right. If it is a 6 MB genome from first base to the last base the specific numbers are allotted in a serially uh, only. Mm. So, if you are taking a set of data remember the first base should represent the same coordinate. You understand that is very very important. So, Co same base position in the same way the last base is also the last base uh, coordinate. Hmm. So, this is very important same length is fine, hmm. yeah. but they but should where? represent from the same base call. And from where it from starts? Two, it hmm. start from two seven two in all, hmm. all the things. This For example, here you may have done sequencing from anywhere in the genome, okay? but when you assemble and put it into the gen bank there must be some particular uh, start point of all the sequence which has already been deposited. For example, in this virus what we are handling all the sequence starts from the origin of replication. So, origin of replication of all these viruses you can see it starts from ACC. So, you, you, may, you may have done sequencing from some other portion not from origin of replication, but when you deposit the sequence you have to cut the sequence and paste it in such a fashion. So, it your sequence should also start from ACC, it you may not have done sequencing from ACC, you may have done sequencing from anywhere, but when you uh, assemble the sequence you start your sequence with ACC and then paste all the other contexts and then uh, form the entire sequence. Otherwise it will start from somewhere and your deposited sequence is from somewhere you, you, they may be of same length, but you, they cannot be because software cannot alignment means top to bottom only. So, if they are not matching the first nucleotide with the last nucleotide they cannot do any alignment. Okay, okay. That is point number one, point number two is the most important point uh, in blast analysis you did the down below the details are there okay. every hmm. basis query and the, the database one is paired you must see the orientation of your sequence out yeah, of first that, 10 that all of them should be in the same orientation mm. because we already uh, highlighted here there is always a positive orientation and negative orientation mm. uh, sense and anti sense ensure that the one you have taken on board for this mega multiple alignment all of them are in the same orientation. Here, Otherwise here what happens is see? if it is anti and sense and anti sense are paired together obviously you are going to see the complete difference between they may be the same sequence, but when you make a tree they fall into two clusters. Okay? You have to be very careful what you are selecting should be uniform okay, not only example. the length, but also the orientation. Here you just see is that clear to all of you? When you do up you, 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 you got this kind of things now you, you take one of these. So, it is showing the query sequence and the subject subject means which is already deposited and you can see the strand the last column plus see the last column plus that means plus both are in the same orientation also if they are in opposite orientation it may give you a, a analysis but the retrieving when you will do it will retrieve the opposite sense sequence okay then you will not able to uh, do so how to rectify analysis. this problem reverse complement your sequence here because on friday this here. is already deposited sequence you cannot do anything with that so you reverse complement your sequence do again analysis then it should have plus plus 
okay it should on, not have yeah. plus on minus on friday we discussed in length how to do the reverse complement mm. so that will help you here mm. okay and so, again you see majority of them are plus if one or two is negative uh, minus the minus you put it in the plus mm. okay if majority of them are negative one or two is plus so what you do the plus you put it in negative you got it na so everything should be harmonized length as well as orientation and if you choose those things and if, if some sequence is very erratic you remove those sequence because in the gen bank many dump sequence many bogus sequence people deposited so if you are trying to find out for example in this 10 sequence if some someone is not starting from acc don't take those sequence because it will create problem to you okay so only choose the proper things which will be useful for your analysis yeah sir sir if it is uh, uh, in ncbi it is given plus and minus mm. then how i will get the complementary sequence plus plus no that because already in the gen bank whatever sequence is there they rectified it as a positive sense all because that that is thinking that they already deposited in the plus sense okay, okay. many times it comes in plus minus no hmm. after doing the first multiple alignment you will come to know hmm. because you cannot take first of all you have to check that is for sure hmm. after doing the blast you have to see the down what is really up, it's plus 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 if Only majority of plus that means those things are If correct plus minus is there you have to necessarily convert into reverse complement because somebody may have deposited the sequence in wrong orientation then but majority of if they are plus plus that means one sequence which is deposited that is wrong sequence so then you have to change that sequence orientation into the proper orientation okay so uh, then so after doing this next thing is so now you have to do uh, what is the actual percent similarity or distance and the phylogenetic analysis so you can create this distance here compute pairwise distance so what is the pairwise distance between these sequences so if you click this so it will ask you to save in that desktop new folder we have created wherever we are saving yeah. okay this is distance how this will make it hmm? no new folder no 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 you just see in the mega oh ah, different options are there please pay attention ah, sorry sorry first we have to <laughs> save it so we have not saved so this file uh, first you uh, do after alignment you save the file hmm. that will be saved as dot mg file so export alignment mega format you can save save it to that folder test align by default you just select mega format okay so it will new folder in the same folder you save input anything input data file give any data protein coding sequence yes so already it will it saved as after alignment you have to save your file okay you did some work so it need to be saved so you save as mega format file for me yeah that only the same folder that one this one yeah that one done so now you open open the file again wait wait some of them not saved it saved you save it in mega format so put export. it in the it is not written as save it is written as export export okay export the alignment file 
in mega folder you save it in the the file where So yeah, every, everybody, on, everybody has saved and again open. Already saved. Uh, dot ALN, uh, dot save, mega save, file you save, have saved. Save, save. Again open that thing. Somebody climbed a tree also already. <laughs> <laughs> so distance yeah, now. Uh, so distance you go and then compute pairwise distances. Mega. Same mega only. Mega, mega only. Mega is open. No, again, again, you have to open the file. File, go to the file. Open a file or session. Open a file and session. And open the op file what you saved. Open the file now what you have saved. Save. Okay. So when you save, this will appear like this in the back backdrop. So it will appear like this. The last one is the file, yeah. So this aligned is the file. actually the file, aligned file, which you have saved. Yeah, you have to practice it, okay? Yes, Aya? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except one or two, I think. Uh, yeah, they already climbed the tree. Eh? It has come here, here, here. Great. It is not yeah. there? <laughs> I will finish. <laughs> At least mega we have to finish. Okay, giant hand with the Charishma. <laughs> okay, so proceed. Yeah. So, in the distance, you go to compute pairwise distance. You have to just click it. Compute pairwise distance. So, in the compute pairwise distance, you can see uh, the different formats are there. Su substitution type, nucleotide, maximum complete. So, you keep it everything and then give compute. Here it is a compute. So, this creates a file. This is the distance file. So, here the 10 sequence, here only the number is given of this 10. So, it is just like a fair chart of the bus that from this with this, this is 100 percent similar that means there is no distance. With this and this, the distance is 0 0.017 that means the similarity is 99.9 the rest of the thing. So, 100 you have to divide, uh, uh, subtract it from 100 then that is the similarity percentage and this is the distance. So, it will create a distance file. So, from where actually you can tell your sequence is having how much percent similarity then not from the blast from uh, after this alignment analysis, yeah. only you have to tell what is the percent similarity of your sequence with other sequences clear so zero means they are same okay as they deviate a single base pair variation will bring some distance two base pair variations will bring little more distance three base pair variation will bring still more distance Right, as the number of bases varies, the distance will go be will be increasing. One thing uh, I forget actually, whatever sequence you have uh, uh, retrieved, those are the sequences deposited in the database. But where is your sequence? Yeah. So in that file, actually, the first sequence you have to put your sequence and then save the file as dot first file. That I forget that that your sequence, whatever you have generated, that sequence you have to put first in that file okay and then set the file as dot first yeah file. I, I think that goes without saying because <laughs> after all you are handling your data so yeah, and you are comparing your data with somebody else data obviously the first entry should be your entry first entry okay. should be your entry that i forget but uh, uh, like that the procedure is same and you have to create and then in that case the first sequence will be your sequence and it is showing the value for example this is the first sequence so it is showing the value with the other sequence what is the percent similarity or distance clear so this is the, the way we can generate the percent distance or percent similarity now next one is you can save it also and now next one is your phylogeny how to create the phylogenetic tree so click on that and there are these different option maximum likelihood ne never joining minimum evolution upgma this maximum parsimony 
So, all those things are there Wh what I told the last day that different formats or different character based approach or uh, distance, distance based, based approach. approach. So, these are there you have to do the for example, here we have taken all the sequence of the similar same virus different strains. So, we will do the maximum parsimony that depends upon your choice what you want to do. So, as we are trying to see the diversity between different isolates of the same organism will do the maximum parsimony. I will stop for a moment here. The choice with phylogenetic algorithm you have to select here, you have to make the choice. You have to make not the software anything you okay. click it will give you a tree, you but have you to have make to the choose choice. that which kind of things you need for your analysis. Otherwise, software can you cannot guide you that what things you want. You got you got it, na? If the analysis is pertaining to intraspecific characterization kind of project, then you go to neighborhood joining. Neighborhood, neighborhood joining you have to do. Okay. Okay. So now you go to this maximum parsimony. So here you can see this bootstrap method and we are giving 1000 replicates means 1000 times it will do replicate the things and try to see what is the confidence of the grouping of the two entity together. Okay? So, 1000 th times keeping one sequence out and again making the uh, phylogeny keeping another sequence out making the phylogeny to see that whether the two sequence will hold together or not okay? and in that way it the software will analyze. So, bootstrap method. Remember bootstrapping is done automatically it is built in within the software itself mm. you do not have to do extra thing you just click only thing you have to do is the number of time it need to be replicated that figure that you have to give. Mm. It may it be there be in the 500, 500, here 500 I, I have given 1000 that means more uh, confidence will be built up that up to 1000 times how many times they are holding together. Okay? So, compute then again compute. Huh? Okay, this he is going to change into 100 replications. Ah, now, be because for that shorter time, I am Remember, <laughs> using 100. If you put 1000 times, it so takes long time long because time 1000 times it will do the same analysis. Okay, So, I am giving only 100 for doing quick. So, then compute. Any doubt? So, you, you click the maximum parsimony automatically it will open. So, you click that, that number of times you want bootstrapping that is it uh, that, huh. num that number sometimes uh, some manuscripts some journals they insist you go for 1000 mm. that will you will come to know after first review mm. they will ask you okay you did only 100 times not sufficient you do it for 1000 times then you repeat it 1000 times okay, that, that is in your hand only you can do at any time. So, now give the compute everybody come to up to this we cannot go back I am repeatedly telling you. <laughs> so, Compute. Not? It should be there. <laughs> it should be there. It should be there, yeah. Check you it. Click, you click on the right right side drop down. Right side drop down. Check it, check it, it must be there. Yeah. Okay. So now give compute. So now you just see it is doing so fast because hundred times only it will do. If it is thousand times, so slow it will come. Okay. Uh, two things the length of the sequence uh, and number of bootstrapping will decide how much time it is going to take. And number of sequence, number of sequence, length of sequence and number of bootstrap it tells you how long it will take. <laughs> so, anybody is lagging behind all of you are catching up huh? by and large. So, you just see this is the phylogenetic tree and these are the bootstrap value and here output tree actually they prepared two different types of tree. This is one tree and this is the second tree. They prepared two different types of tree. This is one tree, this is second tree. So, what these is the two difference? trees are different. What is the difference? You can First see tree is the original tree. Now, both, both these two trees are original tree because by the bootstrapping they choose thought that there could be possibility of two different tree because these two may come together, these two may also come together that that kind of situation may arise. 
okay so they do like that and then they also do a consensus tree that among these two different tree which is consensus means after 100 times of doing the replication which tree gives more confidence so that is here which is called bootstrap consensus tree so this is the consensus tree which we have to choose that this is the consensus tree okay the original tree may not be the correct but the consensus tree you have to choose okay out of 100 replication this tree what is appeared as a consensus tree is the one which is uh, the best uh, possible tree best confident tree, best tree confidence is tree that out of this analysis. and then uh, you can see now here are different types of tree i told you phylogen uh, cladogram phylogram rectangular cladogram slanted cladogram so this kind of things now you can choose that which one you want if you want this type of tree if you want this type of tree so what is happening oh now see this is slanted cladogram okay you can do curved cladogram okay so Cir as per also. your choo choice if you want to do a circular. unrooted tree that there is no root then give this kind of unrooted so there is no root okay this is not for the beautification as per your uh, means what is the objective of your tree you have to choose the type of tree this is different visualization format okay so you cannot choose uh, just for beautification purpose there is a science behind that you have to it depends upon the data set okay if uh, the closely related organisms we need to put the root okay that day the theory uh, it was discussed here now you can see here again i, I have done this is the phylogram so some tree, some branches are coming out some are behind this is more behind so what does it mean this is evolutionary much more advanced this is much more uh, go beyond and after this evolution they are going as a parallel evolution there is no further evolution in this clad so there are one clad where many division has taken place here only two division has taken place okay here the division taken place early and then it is dividing continuously that means this is much more active uh, uh, means clad where much more mutation much more thing is happening and they are giving rise to new evolution. So, if you want to do this kind of evolutionary analysis you use this kind of phylogram here you can see in the phylogram always there is a bar this indicates what is the length or genetic distance or time. Okay in case of cladogram this bar is missing that means there is no concept of time only the grouping it has made but if you <coughs> try to give a time concept a genetic distance concept concept then you use this kind of phylogram so they again that depends upon your data set whether you want a evolutionary kind of analysis or whether you want a taxonomic grouping based on that you have to choose the type of tree what is there okay many times it happens like that that particularly when you are doing a parsimony sequences are so close together so grouping is not very proper many times groups they are coming one after one one after another so in those kind of cases you have to use a out group out group means a sequence not very much related to that sequence any other sequence okay if you take that thing and if you try to group along with that out group what will happen it will force the other sequence which is very close together form a proper grouping okay because that is from the outside so it forces the uh, similar type of sequence to do a force grouping and do a proper grouping so suppose here uh, here i would like to sh see that this should be a out group if any sequence you take this should be out group then you go there and you put this as a root. So, this out group should be the root 
So, when it will tell that this is the root and based on this root the other things are grouped properly, but here uh, we have not taken any other things. So, this root also build up on this, otherwise what will happen the root comes out separately and the other sequence properly grouped together. For that you have to select when you make a uh, multiple file. alignment file yeah. you introduce one out group sequence also. That is okay. not related to your sequence. Not related to the morning I was talking about. Hmm. Maybe you can take it from another genus. Hmm. All right. Okay. So maybe another species. So that choice you have to make. So that serves as an outgroup. Okay. This outgroup is so important for rooted trees. It will tell you in relation to that outgroup how your how samples are behaving. Hmm. Okay. So besides that, there are other uh, things. You can swipe this, for example, you would like to see these branches stop and they are coming down. So, you can just click them and swipe these branches, flip subtree. So, they will come together and they will. So, this is only beautification purpose. So, how, how you want to represent because when you are writing a paper, you have to show that this clad is my clad and other things. So, that sweeping you can do and uh, analyze, but ultimately your tree will look like that and bootstrapping and other things. I think. Up to this, it is okay because <laughs> Any doubts? we cannot show more yeah. things because this no, software this is, is very powerful. So it's more than sufficient, actually. I think uh, I'm glad that most of you, most of reached this stage. I think I'm seeing all these trees in everybody's computer, so that means they could do it independently, right? So, any any more doubts? Any clarifications for this uh, session? What? Pairwise divergence gives uh, inference about percent identity or similarity. That depends upon what you, because if you create a distance file, that will tell you what is the percent dis difference is there. That means, if you um, uh, subtract it from 100, if you convert it into first percentage and uh, subtract it from 100, that is the percent identity. Identity. Sorry. Yes. It is only how you want to project it. Yes. You want to if it as a similarity, uh, similarity then. Mm. I wanted to know whether it is similarity or no. Identity. It is identity. 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 Sequence identity. Okay. Sequence similarity matrix. Uh, different software. Uh, other software produced, but in Mega and Bioedit, they produce sequence identity or sequence distance, not the similarity because similarity calculation algorithm will be different. Okay. And how to make that bootstrap values to appear in all that? Uh, how to make bootstrap, bootstrap values appear there? By default. So, it, it will no, come no in. No, like it previously. Uh, no, it in the uh, original tree it is given, na? but in the in the bootstrap consensus tree you have to now find out because that, it is consensus tree, that means, give those values. so the, if you see here it is giving the bootstrapping based on this first tree these two are 100, Be based on the second tree if you see these two again 100, that means these two probability of having these two together is, is 100 same. percentage. Okay, so in the consensus tree there is no need to put again the bootstrap value because this is already consensus tree from different bootstrap value they are uh, determining that these two should be together. Okay. Any more doubts uh, for this uh, yeah, discussion? Yeah. All of you got it? So, you can give a consensus tree, you can give a original tree with the bootstrap value. Okay, so, that again depends upon what actually you are uh, thinking, you, what is your hypothesis and whether your tree is matching with your hypothesis or not. If it is matching from the original tree, you give the original tree with bootstrap value. If it is matching with the consensus tree, you give the consensus tree, that time you do not need the bootstrap value because they are consensus from both different trees. Anirban, I want mm -hmm. to supplement one more. Mm -hmm. When the students are making this kind of a chart, simply do not put it is a phylogram chart. You have to give a clear legends mm. because in journals and manuscripts, they want a clear legends for your analysis. Mm. You have to explain in detail what kind of analysis you have done. Then again, the bootstrap value, what this bar represents, the length of the bar, all those details should be there in the figure legends. The figure should be a self-explanatory. These days when the journals are asking for the abstract, they are asking for the figurative abstracts they were expressing. For that, you have to have this figure as well in the abstract. They are showing in their journal page. So, mm. the figure legend should be self-explanatory, detailing what are all the things you have done for this analysis. Yeah, to 
supplement uh, whatever Dr. Subramaniam told here. Uh, we are not going to demonstrate here. This tree can be decorated. <coughs> Options are available in mm -hmm. Mega. Okay, there is an icon, mm -hmm. the colored icon, the fourth one in the top row. Mm -hmm. you just click it, it opens up another drop down menu. Mm -hmm. Lot of options are there. Lot you of can options. Make this line thicker, thicker, bolder, and lighter, all those kind of that. Those are decorative yeah. items. In Mega 10, it is even more. You can give different colors. For example, the one which is always pairing together, you can give same color. The hundred percent bootstrap <laughs> one, you can give same color. The one which is a deviant, you can put red color. So the choice is yours. <coughs> that you just play with this uh, your uh, software <laughs> graphics. You will you will understand more and more. Okay, so that will uh, will not demonstrate here that you do it from your end. Even even uh, <laughs> suppose one clad you want to give a name, so give the cl uh, clad and uh, you can uh, put it at. An, for example, you are taking Asian isolate, European isolates, and all those kind of things. So you uh, make a clad which all the Asian isolates are there. You click that clad and give the name of that clad as Asian isolate. So it will come as a separate bar exactly. where it will show you that this is the Asian isolate which is grouped together. Yeah. So Over like Over is so practicing mega 10. Now in the tree itself you can edit. That, that was not there in the previous version. Uh -huh. You just go to the tree, right click the name and you put maybe you got it from rice, you got it from wheat or you got it from India, you got it from Pakistan, whatever you got. You can type directly. So that is a uh, added Add feature in mega 10. It's so user friendly. We have used number of times in the recent past. Uh, that make th that makes the tree even more self-explanatory. Okay, that is in your hand. Okay, I think with that uh, uh, we will uh, conclude this uh, molecular phylogeny practical. We started at 10 o'clock. We had a two sessions on that. The first session is all about uh, uh, sequence uh, uh, flat. We started from flat file this morning. We ended up in uh, multiple files after doing blast analysis. From there we carry forwarded our practicals into molecular phylogeny. Then it gave two important uh, 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 data sets. One is the, the distance the data set, another one is the visualization that is a tree. Uh, in the end of the day, you will be able to understand what your data uh, tells for a common man. That's more no, important. What if, what if okay? also. Yeah. Mm. So uh, with that, I think we'll uh, uh, conclude this uh, molecular phylogeny. Dr. Anirban is right here. We are also right here. You can always contact us. Uh, for more clarity or any doubts, if you arise, you can always approach any one of us. We are, we are practicing this kind of uh, softwares uh, almost on a daily basis. Okay, um, thank you, Anirban, for uh, for here uh, for sparing your valuable time, and I'm sure uh, yeah. all of you uh, understood how to uh, make this uh, phylogenetic tree using a set of sequence data. Okay.